Hi, my name is uh, E. David Crawford, and I'm a professor of surgery, urology, and radiation oncology at the uh, University of Colorado in uh, Denver. The uh, topic we're going to discuss uh, right now deals with the management of high-risk localized prostate cancer. What's the role of uh, radical surgery? If we uh, turn the pages and go back in history, the bulk of these patients over the years have been managed with external beam radiation therapy. And when external beam was used alone, uh, the results were not terrific. It wasn't really until studies were done with, with multimodal therapy, com combining radiation with something else that differences were, uh, uh, that came forth. And that was uh, studies with uh, hormone therapy and radiation. Uh, showing that hormone therapy in varying degrees of months from six months to four months and 12 months, 18 months, 36 months uh, made a difference. The pivotal trial was a BOLA trial for locally advanced disease where they used uh, three years. Surgery really was relegated to um, not so much advanced disease and the thought was is that you couldn't get clean margins, uh, you had to do a wide resection, uh, and so forth. Lately, we, we, we've been doing a lot of patients that have higher risk disease. This all started with a, a pilot study we did in the Southwest Oncology Group a decade ago where we took men who had average PSAs of 28. Um, many of them had high grade cancers, eights, and we did radical prostatectomy with four months of hormones. And in fact, if we look at the outcomes at 10 years, those patients actually did pretty well. Uh, certainly better than the, the treatment arm in the BOLA study I mentioned. The issue, uh, of course, was this not a randomized trial. And so what we've done recently in the Southwest Oncology Group is take men who have high-grade cancers, they underwent surgery, and then were randomized to hormones uh, uh, and chemo versus hormones alone. So there's no control arm, but interestingly, at 10 years, very few deaths from prostate cancer. So again, it's multimodal therapy that matters. I, what I always tell patients is, is that knowledge is power and that if you see someone who has high risk disease, you certainly there's some data about radiation, hormones and radiation, but I, yeah, I don't think you should shy away from surgery. Uh, you, when you have prostates out, you know the status of the lymph nodes. We have pretty good evidence that hormones, when you have positive lymph nodes, makes a difference in outcome versus delayed hormones. Finally, when you get the prostate out, you might be surprised. Somebody may have cancer that's confined to the prostate, even though it's high risk, it may not recur. So you can, if somebody has positive margins, you can certainly follow up with radiation. So we, didn't, we don't need to throw away radical prostatectomy in these high risk patients. As a matter of fact, uh, many of them will, will benefit. And you know, surgery really doesn't care if it's a Gleason 9 or a Gleason 6 when it's out. Whereas other modalities, including radiation, sometimes are less effective in higher grade cancers and they sort of need a crutch of something else to help them and that's hormone therapy. Another very interesting area in this whole thing about prostate cancer are people that present with metastatic disease. You know, I see, I see a number of patients a year, they get their first PSA, they're 45, 50, uh, years of age and their PSA 60. You do a bone scan and they would have one or two lesions and then what happens is you, if most people start them on hormone therapy. Uh, if you're really aggressive you might use combined androgen black gate. Well I think there's a rationale that we've learned from other cancers about using things uh, like taking the prostate out or managing the primary. A friend of mine uh, from the University of Michigan has done a lot of work on that and um, I'm going to ask him just to say a couple words about some of his work with management of the primary and, and then we'll have Ganesh uh, introduce himself here in a second. At the University of Michigan we've uh, recently started a, a, a multidisciplinary clinic that focuses on men with high-risk prostate cancer. The goal of this clinic is to focus treatment and discovery on those who need it most. Uh, this clinic encompasses patients who have high grade as well as high stage, uh, both clinically localized and locally advanced, and in some cases, metastatic prostate cancer. Our, the goal of this clinic, as I mentioned, is to focus treatment and discovery on those who need it most. And the interesting thing with this clinic is, is that we've been able to leverage a lot of our translational science as well as uh, clinical trials on, on these men. 
uh, some of the translational science involved is, is that we take, we do a full uh, uh, exome sequencing on all patients in this clinic, um, many of whom under, undergo radical prostatectomy. We also do transcriptome analysis through our partnership with industry, and we use these biomarkers, if you will, uh, to help uh, understand the biology of the disease, as well as to understand uh, who might progress and who might respond to therapy in the future. A particular interest of us, uh, of ours, in the uh, University of Michigan uh, high-risk prostate cancer clinic is try to understand the role of surgery. There have been um, uh, many studies, particularly in other organ sites, that suggest that removal of the primary tumor in the face of metastasis can be helpful. Uh, many of these studies have been done, uh, say, in kidney cancer, uh, in particular in kidney cancer in the urologic field, that show that there is a survival benefit for those who undergo a primary removal of tumor despite the presence of metastasis. We're taking a, a somewhat similar approach and studying it very carefully at the University of Michigan because we believe there are a subgroup of men who are present initially with metastatic disease, who have good functional status, whose metastatic burden is not overwhelming, who might undergo and, and, and benefit a radical prostatectomy. Radical prostatectomy in this setting would provide us information with regards to their uh, gen genome, uh, as well as to the protein level and RNA level of these patients, and we also believe would also remove a large repository of circulating tumor cells, the primary source of metastasis uh, in these patients. So this is one of our ongoing efforts that we have in the high-risk prostate cancer clinic at the University of Michigan, and the key part of this clinic is that it's multidisciplinary in nature. We have uh, an excellent and outstanding working group with radiation therapists, medical oncologists, translational pathologists, and of course, urologic surgeons.